Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I am doing a massive unhaul. I'm deciding to do it today because I'm going to a book meetup today in Melbourne and uh, we're meeting at like a public library drop-off place. So a bunch of these I'm going to bring to that and then the rest of them uh, I'm going to donate to my local library. Each of these two sections, uh, public donation versus library donation, has uh, books I have no intention of reading, books I DNF'd, and then books I actually read and still want to unhaul. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get right on into it. Uh, like I said, we have 30 books to get to, so the ones uh, that I didn't read, I'm just going to speed through them because, yeah, they're not that interesting to me. So, alright, the first one that I'm unhauling, this is called Byron's Daughter by Catherine Turney. I guess um, I bought this because I was going to paint it and use it uh, for a Halloween costume, but I did not, so, okay. Um, moving on, this is Indigo by Clemens J. Setz. This is a dystopian, and I started it and couldn't get past the first few pages, so it's also going. Uh, this is Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne. Honestly, I've had no inclination, no feeling like I want to pick this up, uh, and if I do, I'm sure that I can find it online very easily. So there we go. Um, this is Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin. This is another one that I've had no inclination to pick up. Um, yeah, it just never called to me, so I will donate it and hopefully someone else, uh, you know, this will be their thing. Alright, um, another one is The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers. Um, again, no inclination to pick up. I picked this up in America, so I feel pretty bad. I bought this for $3 in the US, and then I brought it all the way back with me to Australia. <sighs> for what purpose? I don't know. I don't know. Shame on me. Okay, and then we have two books left here. This is The Stolen White Elephant by Mark Twain. I actually really don't like Mark Twain, um, for various reasons, and I don't want to read anything by him. So donation. And the last book um, in this kind of section where I have no intention of reading it, this is uh, Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters. The only reason I'm donating, donating this is because I actually have another copy which I prefer, so I'm going to keep this one and donate this one. So the next section of books which I'm going to be donating today um, are books that I tried to read and then DNF'd. So the first one we have here is the Swan Book by Alexis Wright. Uh, this one, I believe, is set in a dystopian, futuristic Australia where, yeah, there's like the first Aboriginal president of Australia. Um, there's also a lot of stuff like against women, uh, but I think like the scene opens with a rape and I just like did not. I'm, I'm good. I just, that's okay. Not for me. <laughs> Um, and another one that I'm giving away is Gold Rush by Mary Yu, uh, which is sad because this was really hard to find actually, because um, this is a Japanese translation. I got it in America in a special bookstore and then I brought it back here. This is just too dark for me, honestly. It's ultra dark and I just, <laughs> I tried to read it, I made it, how far? I made it 50 pages and I just, I cannot continue, it's too dark for me. So if you like really dark, like ultra pitch black dark books, maybe this would be for you. This is Gold Rush by Mary Yu. Um, it's following a young man who is pretty much like a bad apple, like a rotten apple. And he decides he's gonna take over his father's um, pachinko and uh, like gambling hall. And so he has this design to kill his father and then take over. Um, but before we even got there, there was like the rape of a young girl and like just not good. So not, 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 not for me. Okay, um, next up is A Sense of Wonder by John Wyndham, Murray Linster, and Jack Williamson. So this one I tried to read and honestly, I just could not get into it. I wanted to read this because of John Wyndham. Um, I've actually liked quite a lot of John Wyndham's writing, uh, but for some reason this was just boring me to tears. I've tried to pick it up a few times and just over it. Over it. <laughs> so next up is actually one that I was quite surprised at. This is The October Country by Ray Bradbury. 
Um, so if you have been watching this channel for a while, maybe you know that Ray Bradbury is one of my like most beloved authors. Um, and I think it's because all of his work that I've read before this was sci-fi, <sighs> which I think is where he truly shines because a lot of this, the elements he's talking about can apply to different people, like now. The problem I had with this was because it's set in reality, like it's set in the modern world at different like carnival events and October kind of shenanigans. Uh, his writing was just not good against uh, like a lot of punching down, which I really don't appreciate and I didn't feel like reading past the first few stories. So this wasn't for me. If I read more Bradbury, I think I've learned the lesson that I need to read his space stuff and not his realistic fiction stuff. Um, Cause not my cup of tea. Okay. Um, another one that was a huge disappointment to me. This is Twice Bitten, Love in Vain, Tales of Vampire Erotica. Um, honestly, Vampire Erotica is not really my thing. I never would have picked this up except for the fact that it's edited by Poppy Z. Bright who is my uncontested favorite horror writer. Um, and I mean, it's just edited by Poppy Z. Bright. Not all the stories are written by Poppy Z. Bright. So a lot of these were all over the place. And then a few of them were so graphic and so disgusting that I had to put this down like three different times. So uh, over last Halloween, when I said I'm giving it the third and final try, I gave it the third and final try, can't do it, <laughs> and yeah, the scene, the last story that finally was like the final straw uh, involved immortal creatures who had children, and then they slept with the children, and then the children like ate them, like cannibalism. So no, we don't need that. I'm good. That's fine. And another one that is going, although I'm a bit hesitant to even like put it out on any shelves, this is Incest by Christine Angot. Um, this is a stream of consciousness French book. Um, and like when I first heard about this book, it had like really great reviews and more like, this doesn't actually mean what it means. Like, I don't believe that that's even in here. Yeah, but it was just really bad. Like the stream of consciousness, I just couldn't understand what was happening. It was like talking about her daily life, like, but totally uneventful things are happening and it was just all over the place and no. Nah. The next books <laughs> that are being donated today are books that I or my husband have read. So I'm just gonna throw up the two that are my husband's because I have no idea about what they're about. This is The Hinge Factor by Eric Durschmid. There you go. This is going. No idea what it's about and don't care. And this is Breathe by Tim Winton. Or Breath by Tim Winton. Um, and I do know that this is like about a surfer, I think. Um, so yeah. Okay. So now we're back to the books that I've read that I read all the way through and I'm like, absolutely no. So the first is A Thousand Rooms of Dream and Fear by Atik Rahimi. Um, I think I gave this one or two stars. Uh, this is following a student who is abducted on his way home from university and he's beaten and left for dead like in a gutter. A woman rescues him and takes her home, takes him home and like nurses him back to health while the soldiers are looking for him. And I just really didn't like the way that the woman who rescued him was portrayed. I thought it was really vulgar and totally unnecessary. So. Nope. <laughs> um, next is Rainbirds by Clarissa Gionawin. Uh This one I really liked until I realized we're never getting resolution in the end. Nope. So this is following a young man whose sister is murdered in a small town in Japan and he goes to the town, gets a job there, and is trying to figure out what happened to his sister. And it sounds like a great like, plot idea. It sounds like a great plot. Uh, great idea. And then when we're reading, it's so atmospheric of Japan. It's done so well. But then, about two-thirds of the way through, you realize nothing is getting resolved. Nothing. 
nothing at all. Um, so this one actually made me quite angry. I think I gave it three stars in the end, or maybe two and a half, but I was just so mad by what I felt like was a waste of my time that I don't really want it on my shelves. Um, next up is Texas Gothic by Rosemary Clement Moore. This is about a family of witches and uh, one of the young witches is like house sitting for her aunt when a nearby kettle farm is having like ghost disturbances and wouldn't you know it the guy who runs the farm is curmudgeonly so there's like this ghost hunting witch factor plus maybe a romance um this was okay i think i gave it three stars but it's nowhere in the realm that i would ever reread it so uh yeah i'm just gonna donate it and maybe someone else could find the book that they love. Uh, it's just not for me. And the last one that I'm donating today <laughs> is Don't Call Us Dead by Denise Smith. I know that a lot of people truly love this poetry collection, which is about growing up um, queer and black in America, but I just didn't resonate with it and um, I didn't understand a lot of it, honestly. So I am gonna donate it. I would love to donate it to my local library so that people in my local community could read it. However, there is a penis on the cover, so that pretty much rules it out from donating it to the library. But I will be bringing it today, so hopefully someone can pick this up and enjoy it more than I did. All right, so now we're moving into the realm of books that I'm donating to my local library. So it means <laughs> they are in like new condition, they've been published in the last five years, and they have no nudity on the cover. So, again, we'll do have no intention of reading, DNF, and don't want to keep on my shelves. All right, so we have two books in the first category. So the first one is You Are About Us and Making Money by Jen Cicero. For some reason, I was feeling like super, like last year, like I'm gonna self-improve and I'm gonna like do this whole like, I'm worth it, just money, like come to me. And then I never really picked this up and it's okay, so. It's, it's going to be donated. Um, and then another one is The Christmas Sisters by Sarah Morgan. This was given to me. I don't really read family drama books and I don't know, it's set at Christmas, but the only thing I like to read at Christmas truly is like Highland or Regency Romance. Um, I don't really want to read about sisters, so and it will be donated. Next up is books that I have read and DNF'd. So this is Our Chemical Hearts by Crystal Sutherland. I am DNF'ing this because it's about a guy who's in high school and he kind of falls for the new girl in school who has a limp and she's kind of a huge, uh, I guess, curmudgeon prickly pear. And turns out like she was in a car accident and like she's dealing with a lot of trauma and a lot of grief. And if this isn't a book idolizing the male gaze, I don't know what is. Like reading this just made me feel icky and I just wanted to like slap the main guy character and be like, leave her alone. She's not interested in dating you right now. She's going through like so much grief and so much trauma and it just infuriated me. So um, yeah, this one definitely they can go to the library. So another one that's uh, a DNF is A Little Life by Hanya Yamigahara. I tried to read this with Jorline like last year and it was a huge fail for me. Um, I don't know who I think I was, but I don't like sprawling life like over decades um, and especially multiple point of views and this is exactly what this is. This is following, I believe, four queer or gay men in New York City, I think as they move from university to then their life and what that entails. And it was just not my cup of tea. I just don't read books like this. I don't like them. And um, I will donate it and someone will definitely probably enjoy it way more than I did. Okay. I also have Lorelei by Laura Dockrell. This is a mermaid story, a YA mermaid story basically. And I was really into it in the beginning, and then I realized that every few chapters, the point of view is from uh, an inanimate object, such as a shipwreck or like a house. And I'm like, why? I don't want that. Um, so I just, I just really didn't like that that much. Um, yeah. So I just, I don't know. Life is too short and I just didn't feel like it and I have no compulsion to pick it back up, so 
to the library it goes. And the last one that I am donating in the DNF pile is The Wedding Party by Jasmine Guillory. If you guys have watched my February wrap up part two, I will leave it linked down below if you have not. Then you know that I've broken up with Jasmine Guillory. Um, nope, I just, I don't get on with her writing style. I think that it's a little bit juvenile and it's based on a lot of cliches and assumptions and I just, I don't like it. So uh, I tried to read this, it was a huge DNF and it shall be donated, no big deal. <laughs> okay, so the last few books I have are books that I did read all the way through, so let's go ahead and get into it. This is Census by Jesse Ball. This was so intriguing to me in like the premise. So we are following a guy who finds out he's dying and he is like, what can I do with my son who has Down syndrome? Um, for the last few months of my life. So he decides to become a census taker in this dystopian world or pretty much the most expensive, most developed uh, colony is Colony A in the middle. And then as you go out kind of in uh, concentric circles, it goes B, C, D all the way to Z. So he's going to take the census in like a straight line from A out to Z. And I was just so intrigued because it talks about how society is falling apart and like what's really happening in this world as he gets to like the fringes. And then his idea is like when he passes away down the line, he'll put his son on a train that will go back to A. So I was like, this sounds like such a good premise and such a like unique premise, but it's kind of a freaking lie because they, they get through a few colonies, but then Nothing about the world is really explored. Nothing about why it's this way is explored. Nothing about the dystopia is explored. It just is. So it's mostly about the father reminiscing on his early life. It's not even about building like a relationship with his son. It's more about him reminiscing about his younger days and like when his wife was still alive. And I just was like, what? And then when we get to the end, I was just like, nope. So I think I gave it two or three stars. Um, just wasn't wasn't for me. wasn't I was, It did not live up to what the premise promised me. So another one that really kind of ticked me off is *The Erratics* by Vicky Laveau Harvey. This is a memoir about when Vicky Laveau Harvey was taking care of her ailing parents who live in Canada and kind of what she goes through. So it's talking about the abusive relationship between basically her mother to her father and kind of the hoarder situation that's in the house. And I just, I don't know. I didn't like the dynamic. I didn't like the portrayal. I didn't like how it was written. Like there were so many things that I didn't like about it. And um, honestly, I kind of, I think this was a cover buy because I'm not hugely into memoirs, but I thought that this was going to be like a dark kind of look at it, at taking care of your parents as they're ailing, but I was just, I was bored and annoyed. So I don't think that's uh, the feelings that, that I should have with that book. Okay, moving on. We have three books left. So this is Note to Self by Connor Franta. I really like this actually. It deals with his open discussion about having depression and being gay and coming out and it's interspersed with like poetry and images and it's just really lovely but i don't think i'll ever reread it and i think that if the library does take it it would be really great for someone who's younger to get their hands on this and be able to like read it so um that's why i'm donating this one no hard feelings against it at all i just think that um someone else would benefit from getting their hands on it more than me okay the last two i are recent reads this is An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. Uh, okay, so as you guys will have seen in my, I think, February wrap-up part two, which again, I'll leave linked down below. Um, this one is following a man, a black man who is wrongly accused of a heinous crime and he's sentenced to jail. So it's about the story of him and his wife's marriage as he is incarcerated and she lives obviously like in the outside world. Now, that part was absolutely fascinating, but what happens after that, I severely disliked. Uh, there's lots of cheating, which as anyone knows, like is a huge turnoff in a book for me. Like I abhor it. 
Um, and there's a lot of like family drama and pettiness and just, it was not for me. So it was going to be a four star and then after that happened, it became a three star. And again, I will never reread this book and I think if I donate it to the library, someone else can get their hands on it who might like it and not have the same feeling that I did. Okay, <laughs> so we are to the last book that I am donating to my library and this is Putney by Sofka Zinoviev. Um, this was blurred to me as a book for the Me Too movement and I disagree <laughs> due to how the ending goes. Um, this is following Daphne who in her youth really like fell in love with an older man, like one of her father's friends, and they started a sexual relationship and she's quite young. So it's completely predatory, it's grooming, it's unacceptable, but for the longest time she thinks that she is still like in love with him until her daughter reaches the age that she was when she first uh, started seeing that older man and she realizes just how young her daughter is and how unable she would be to make an adult decision. And then everything kind of flips on its head and she decides she's going to seek uh, kind of justice for what happened to her. And I was, honestly, this is a very meandering writing style, so I was a bit distanced, but I still wanted to see what the author would do. And as it went on, I was really looking forward to the end, some like righteous come up in, some like justice. And then the author just decided to just not do that. Just don't, just not, she didn't do that. Uh, and it really made me mad because I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. I'm not saying justice isn't thwarted in reality, but I'm saying the book was building up to one thing and then it just took a complete left turn and I was furious by the ending. And uh, yeah, so I don't really want a book which just when I look at it, it makes me mad <laughs> on myself. So yeah. These are all the books that I am donating publicly today or next week to my local library. Had no intention of reading, DNF'd, and just don't want on my shelves. So, <laughs> um, let me know your thoughts down below. If I'm making a horrible choice or if you agree with me on any of these books, please let me know. I'd love to chat to you in the comments. Let me know some of the books that you have gotten rid of lately. I'm feeling a lot of catharsis uh, from this. For some reason, I feel great about this whole this whole donating business. So uh, I will chat to you guys in another video soon. And thanks so much for watching. If you liked this, please give me a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button. That would be amazing. And I will see you all in another video soon. Bye.